Uh, hi again everyone, uh, I'm Yasser and today we're going to be talking about how you can use RPCs uh, inside of DeepStream. So first off let's start with saying what RPCs actually are. They're remote procedure calls and they're very similar to uh, the HTTP land that we currently know. So what it means is you can make a request and say I want to do something or I want to get data from the system and then somewhere, some, uh, somewhere in the platform something would respond to that request and be like okay here's the data or in the case of posts in HTTP, you'd be like, I want to change something and then it will change it for you. So, we're going to jump straight into doing all of this today inside of the actual, inside of Sublime, inside of a text editor, rather than, and testing inside of the browser, rather than doing it inside of the console straight away. So let me just start with a cleaner environment. Great. All right. So following off from the previous tutorial, uh, what we want to do initially is always connect to the platform itself. So what we're going to do is provide our unique identifier for our application. And then the next thing that we want to do is login. So you'll notice that there's a very small difference here with login, which is what we're doing is we're actually passing arguments. The first argument is your authentication parameters. Because we still want these connections to be anonymous, it's currently empty. And then the second argument is the callback that tells you whether or not your connection has authenticated successfully. So in here, I'm going to just do a console.log and say login success. Right, so in, and this here is our subscriber. So if I refresh this, what should happen is it said login true, is true, which is great. I'm also going to just copy and paste this quickly inside of our provider code so that they're both so far equal. And then right now in the provider, when I refresh, it should also say it logged in successfully. So that's great. All right, so what we want to do now is actually provide an RPC. So it's the equivalent of saying you want to provide a HTTP endpoint. So in order to do this, what we're going to do is say client.rpc.provide. So the first argument that we want to pass in is actually going to be the unique name. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to provide something that just says hello. And then we're going to say, OK, it will take a callback, which will have the data and the response object. So what this callback actually is, is the data is whatever the RPC request was made with, and the response is how you're willing to respond to the actual RPC request. And what we want to say here is when someone says hello, we want to respond and just say hello back. So we're going to say response.send, hello there. And then that should pretty much be it for the provider. OK. And then inside of the subscriber, we want to now make the RPC, right? So we're going to say client.rpc.make. We're going to give it the name of the RPC that we want to make. Uh, let's, for now, say we're not going to give it any data whatsoever. And then next we're going to actually provide the callback. So the actual callback that happens once the RPC has been satisfied. And we're going to, this takes two arguments, which is the first is going to be the error object, and the second one is going to be the result. So here I'm going to do console.log, and I'm just going to log both of those. So if we now refresh the subscriber, you'll see that what happened is it made the RPC, and we immediately got the hello there uh, callback. Uh, result. So let, let's make this a tiny bit more interesting. Let's add a name. So I'm Yasser. So I'm just going to provide Yasser as the data payload that we send down. And what's going to happen here is we're going to put Yasser inside of the hello there statement. So let's go with that. And that's going to be data. Was it dot name or dot ID dot name? Perfect. And then if we refresh both of these again really quickly, what should happen is it said hello there, Yasser. So this is how you can actually pass data across. Now, RPCs actually also give you really easy ways to say something went wrong. So you could say response.error and provide a meaningful error message, which is like, it's, well, let's, let's go with, I, I'm a grumpy man. So I'm grumpy. Uh, so you refuse to acknowledge the hello because you're grumpy. Let's do that. If we refresh the provider, again, refresh the subscriber, what should happen is the first argument is actually 
the error message. So you can know that, by the way, something has incorrect has happened within the RPC. Uh, the last thing that you can actually do as well is part of what the DeepStream platform actually gives you, and it's the concept of rejects. So RPCs, uh, actually, I've been comparing them a lot to HTTP when we started, because it's the easiest way to, thing to compare it to, but it's actually significantly more powerful because you can dynamically start registering, so you can, call, you can start providing RPC endpoints at any point in time. You can unprovide them at any point of time. And what you can also do is provide multiple of the same endpoints, and then what DeepStream would do is it would load balance them across all of the people who can actually satisfy your RPC call. And because of that, we have this thing called response.reject. So what this means is this provider here got a request for hello. It's not go it doesn't want to fulfill it, but it does want someone else in the platform who also provides the same RPC to do that. And this is extremely useful if you for load balancing purposes and stuff. So for example, if you're doing a lot of transactions, you have quite a lot of a, uh, jobs that are still waiting, you could reject those until your job queue uh, like slims down quite a bit and then start accepting accepting them again later. Okay, and that's it for RPCs. And uh, next off, we're going to be talking, or next time, we're going to actually be talking about records and data sync. Thank you.